and it just means that the map that you represent from the globe into this planar, planar uh, field here is going to be deformed somehow. It's going to be deformed as uh, you are going away from the center point, and these circles give an intuition about how this deformation is going to happen. So basically, as you approach the edges of this, of this region, you will see this kind of stretching occurring on the, on the shapes. And if you look around, you will see uh, on the map that some of the countries uh, along the borders, even here, I think Spain looks uh, a bit more stretched in that direction. So there are problems occurring, and it's not the perfect representation in, uh, in any way. Now, there are also some conical uh, projections. So instead of using this type of uh, disk on top when you do the projection, you use a cone. This gives another type of map representation. It's also useful um, for some purposes, for example, uh, for flight navigation. Because if you draw a straight line on this map, it approximates very well what is happening in reality. So in reality, a straight line like this would look as a curve on top of the, of the Earth. But straight lines here uh, are approximately the same value, the same length as the curved line on the surface of the Earth. So they are good when planning flight routes. Anyway, this is also not something that we will need very much unless you come up with some project that uh, deals with flight navigation. What we really work with, I, I would say, most often are cylindrical projections. And this is something that looks a bit more like what you are used to from geography class, for example. Um, so you take the cylinder and you put the, the sphere in the middle, the Earth, and then you project it into, into the multiple directions until it reaches the, the cylinder surface. And then you unwrap the cylinder, and then you get this kind of nice flat, flat uh, map. So what is happening in this situation, if you look at these uh, circles, they are still being stretched. Now they are uh, stretched if you go uh, more north into the northern hemisphere, or more south into the southern hemisphere, and they are being stretched in this horizontal direction. And this should make sense because if you go to the extreme, like I would guess the North Pole is somewhere here. Actually, the North Pole is also here. And here. I mean, all of this, all of this line actually corresponds to a one point uh, on the top of the Earth. So you can see that this stretching really becomes as wide as this, um, as this map at the end of this border. So there is a, a very big distortion. However, the reason we use this map so much and the reason why you are familiar with this map is because we are not often interested in what happens at the North Pole. It's, uh, we are more interested in at what happens where we are in this, this area. And here it is represented relatively well. Now, this, specifically this cylindrical uh, projection has a name. It's called this uh, equirectangular projection. And it's used quite often. You have probably met it in, in many places. Uh, and we will use it, we will apply it today in some, in some uh, experiment, some demo. But really, it's not the most common map that you see out there. The most common map you see is called the Mercator projection. And this is exactly what is being used in uh, OpenStreetMap or Google Maps or Apple Maps or uh, uh, any of these modern um, map services which we will study tomorrow. But what happens here is that basically this cylinder is a little bit taller than the Earth. 
so that you can compensate a little bit this uh, stretching that happened horizontally is now equal to some kind of stretching that happens um, also vertically. So you see that these circles here, they are actually circles now, while in the rectangular projection they were oval shaped. So the reason this is done is because when we use the, Merc the Mercator projection, most often we use it because we need navigation. And when we need navigation, we need these shapes to remain the same, to understand the streets and to understand the landmarks in a, in a good way. We don't want them to deform. Because if you look on the map and, and you position yourself here, and you see a tree somewhere, maybe this this far away, on the Eki rectangular projection it means that okay maybe I have to go twice to the east and once to the north, but if you consider the Mercator projection, uh, this real situation is that you have to go twice to the north also, so it gives an unintuitive um, understanding of, of distances and that's why this one is, is most commonly used uh, everywhere. But anyway, I think that uh, we will try to understand these projections a little bit better and to see how, how really they can be useful in practice because um, I think we will build today some application that also teaches you a little bit about projections. So I will try to uh, build a software where we do the reverse. So I will teach you how you take a projection, a flat representation of the Earth, and how to wrap it around the sphere in a 3D environment. So we will try to texture a sphere using one of these uh, flat projection projections and see what comes out of that and if it works and if it doesn't then why and, and so on. So yeah, forgot to mention this. Yeah, so the directions are correctly preserved using the Merc Mercator uh, projection, but the scale is compromised. And what that really means is just that. Um, there is this famous example that if you look at Australia and if you look at Greenland so I think that if Australia would be on the same latitude as Greenland then it would look something like this so roughly three times the size of Greenland but on this map Greenland looks maybe double or almost three times the size of Australia, so it does deform things a little bit and we have been kind of adjusted to understand this map uh, but it's not really giving the, the, the true situation in terms of scale. So, yeah. Alright, so I think that we can try to do some application and demonstrate how these projections can be useful in practice, but again, the other way around. Instead of starting with the sphere and coming up with a flat surface, let's try to create the Earth, basically, uh, using a flat projection and see how that works. Similar as before, I'm going to uh, work on the CS server so that in the end you can get the, the sample code if you want to play with it. And I have created a folder called, so in the demos, the folder is now called Lamad Earth. So kind of we tried to make a Google Earth, but we are not Google. So it's going to be here. And notice this 3JS, I downloaded it and I added it into the, uh, into the project folder. So I have here uh, all the library that uh, is required to do this kind of uh, WebGL application. 
it's, it's downloaded already, so if you want to do something like this, you need to get it beforehand. And I also have an images directory. And in this images directory, I downloaded from Wikipedia uh, a key rectangular projection of the Earth, which looks like this. So it's, uh, it's just a picture. And I'm going to try to wrap this picture around the sphere in, um, in a 3D environment. So we will see how that works and what, what is the <coughs> outcome going to be. So these are now my, my resources. And you might notice that unlike the other time, I'm going to start with some kind of uh, already written code here. So because I want to finish it in, 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 during the lecture, I needed to uh, come with something that is already partially built. And let's see what the code does first. So it's this projection.html file. That's it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not very impressive. It, it just draws two lines here. A uh, red line, a red segment for the x-axis and the uh, green segment for the y-axis. But uh, actually what it does is allows me to move the environment with the mouse. So I can rotate the environment and I see that I actually have a third axis. This is the z-axis, it's, it's drawn here in blue. And um, the idea what all this code is doing is it's allowing me to uh, initialize the WebGL, but also it gives me support for this kind of rotation of the scene. And also with the right click on the mouse, you can pan the scene around, so from uh, left to right. And with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. So it might seem like it's almost not doing anything because, because that scene is empty, but it is doing something. And I will uh, show you a little bit about how the code works, but this is again not much related to the course, so I'm going to give it very briefly. Uh, here I'm including the necessary uh, parts of, uh, of 3JS. These trackball controls are what is uh, being applied to move the scene around. And this detector is just something that says, yes, your browser can do it. And if it doesn't do it, it's going to give you a warning message. So not too much here. This is the radius of the Earth. We will see that we need it uh, later on. And in the main function, you will see um, some functions being called here that define the scene, the camera, and the controls. So these just mean that I want to create a scene, this uh, white space. The camera is um, an object in uh, OpenGL that we define it to be a perspective camera, so we get this 3D effect, and I set it so that it's looking at the center of the stage, but from a um, from 300 units in our direction. So um, these axes here are actually in the center of the stage, but the camera we are looking at it from 300 distance units away. So that's why we are able to see it in front of us. So not too complicated things. And the controls are these trackball controls that I, I mentioned before. So they enable me to move things around with, with the mouse. And I will need this functionality later to understand uh, what we are creating a bit better. So not too many, many things going on. And this renderer, to render something, it needs to make it visible. So this renderer also has to make the 3D space visible somehow on our flat screen. So it's also doing some calculations there. But um, anyway, I think this is all that, that you need to know. And the only thing I really implemented here is this function called draw axes. It is here, and it's drawing three lines. The first line is going to be from coordinate 0, 0, 0 until this parameter length 0, 0. So this is going to be our x axis and it's going to be 
red if you know your uh, color codes then this ff at the beginning stands for red these uh, other two stand for green and the last one stand for blue so this is our x-axis this is our y-axis it's going to be green and the last one it's going to be blue it's our z-axis and this length is changing places here so very simple uh, just drawing these three lines is something that we have now in this space. So, with this, let's see how we can make something that looks like like the planet Earth, and that will need some ideas from here. Right. So, what the Earth has is a is a radius in the first place. I will set this radius as a parameter even though it's a fixed radius and I already have it defined there. Let's write a function called draw earth since we have the draw axes already there and give it a radius as a, as a parameter. Okay, my keyboard is the wrong language. Maybe I make this uh, font size again a little bigger so first of all uh, I'm going to need for this uh, for this object a parameter for segments and this will become clear in a few few seconds I will just call it segments and I will give it the value of 64 and now I will define two different um, objects, one called geometry, and this will be equal to something from this 3JS library. So bear with me for a, a few minutes and then everything will become clear. something, uh, an object called the sphere geometry and I'm going to instantiate it with the radius parameter and the segments parameter and again the segments parameter. So something a, a bit strange happening here. And secondly, I will create a material for this because if you have a 3D uh, object you need to have it covered in something. If you don't, it's just going to be an invisible object. So this material, we will define it as a phone material. Which we will give the color. Uh, let's, let's make it red for the moment. Okay. And now we will create our Earth. I already have up a global variable, this uh, g earth for it, it's not, not yet defined. So this value is going to be equal to a new 3 mesh object. So I instantiate it with the geometry uh, value defined above and a material. So. Finally, I need to add this um, object to the scene, otherwise it's not going to be uh, contained anywhere, it's just in the computer memory. And lastly, I need to render, so this is happening because I want the scene to update after I draw the, the object. And of course, next to in our main function next to our draw axes I'm also going to put our draw earth our new draw earth function and I'm going to save the file and hopefully something will happen here and it doesn't instead of uh, working we get some errors so um, if you remember last time I, I mentioned this um, developer tools for Google Chrome. So this is also part of the, the lecture is how to do debugging in the browser. 
So in Google Chrome, you can press F12 for this one, or go here for the in the tools for the developer tools, and then you will find this tab for the console. And here you usually get these kind of debug statements, like error, error messages, or warning messages. And now we get some unexpected token appearing uh, here. Okay, and it's true. This is not a correct syntax. Um, I should not use semicolon at the end of a attribute. So this is now an attribute list here inside this uh, this constructor, and it's just not allowed to put that a semicolon. So I'm going to remove it and try again. Okay, and now we have a circle. And if I try to rotate it around, it's really boring because it looks like nothing is happening. But if I zoom in a little bit, something happened. <laughs> well, circle disappeared, but now I can still see those axes that are inside of the circle. So this is uh, uh, me trying to teach you a little bit of what is happening. So material doesn't render from the inside, but something seems, seems to work there. Now, if you want to play with this a little bit, it's possible to make this value transparent. I mean this, uh, this sphere transparent and give it an opacity. So you have to say that I want it to be transparent maybe with 0.4 opacity. So now I'm going to refresh the page and it's going to look a little different, but I hope you, you, you get the point. And now, before you ask me the questions, how do you know how to do that? I'm going to show you that this uh, library is very easy to use. So how I found out to do these, these things is quite easy. You simply have to look at the documentation for this 3JS. For instance, I'm going to copy this sphere geometry. I'm just going to Google it, Google it and it's going to jump me directly to the documentation for 3JS, where I even get this kind of nice um, example implemented using it and here you can see for instance what are these segments my mysterious 64 segments that I wrote there are these things so I want my sphere to look more like a sphere I will need more points to make it look like a sphere so uh, the 64 means the number of, of these uh, different segments there so it doesn't look too blocky and this material again you could do the same if you want to learn more and, uh, and find out what different options you have and also several uh, options that I have not uh, I have not talked about but uh, it's, it's quite interesting what you can do with uh, with uh, properties of these of these Excuse objects me. yeah is the shading included here or some other place uh, it's included in the in the render in the renderer so the, the shading is included here somewhere. I think, yeah, the, the parameters for this are in this WebGL renderer uh, object. So a function that I didn't talk about, I just said that, yes, it is being called here. But um, yeah. OK, but let's go back. This is not the Earth. so. Um, it looks more like Mars, but uh, it's, it's not even Mars, so if you don't know, it's called the Red Planet. This is me, me trying to get away with something, but uh, not, not very convincing. So to make the Earth work, we will use what I mentioned before, this Eki rectangular projection that I, we downloaded from Wikipedia. And let's try to put it on here, so not just this <coughs> color red there, but that image. So I will modify this function a little bit and I will define an object uh, which is a loader. Again from the 3JS library. And I'm going to use it to load the image. So it was in the images uh, directory and I really hope I'm going to write this correctly.
So that's going to be the, the name of the file. And now this load function needs to define a function that what will happen after it loads. So this function at the moment is going to be here. It has one parameter, let's call it uh, texture. And for the moment we leave it empty. And I'm going to close this load function, uh, this load method from here, and semicolon. So this function is going to be called <clears throat> after the browser loads the image in memory. <coughs> so what I want to do after the browser loads the image in memory is then I want to define these things and then I want to create the earth. If I try to create it now, this texture will not have been loaded. So it will not look like, like anything different. So all of these different things uh, are going to go now here. And not much things needed to be changed. It's just that this texture, which is, is an image, I'm going to want to wrap it around the Earth. So instead of making the Earth a red sphere, I'm going to give it something called a map, which is going to be the value of, a te of the texture. And I think that's it. So nothing too fancy happening here, but But it's there. So now we have the Earth, somehow visualized uh, somewhere. And let's see a little bit about what these, uh, how some of the lines on, on the surface of the Earth are called and, and uh, what are their properties. So you probably know what the equator is. is. Um, now, the more north you go, you can find these other equi equidistant lines to the equator. So they are the same uh, distance away from the equator. They are called uh, latitude bands, or sometimes they are called, uh, I'm not sure, uh, parallels, they, they can be called. Um, and they have a degree, so how far north or how far south you go, then uh, this is measured in, in degrees. What is also interesting, maybe, is that they are not straight lines. Um, in the sense that if you go to the equator and you follow it, you will walk in a straight line and you will come back at the same place. But if you go here and you walk along it, you will come back at the same place, but you will not go on this line. So walking on a straight line, for example, here, would create something like, like this, would not create this, this parallel line. This might be a bit counterintuitive, but if you think about the extreme case, what happens at the North Pole, like if you think that this thing is the North Pole, then basically to walk around the circle, the small circle around the North Pole, you have to turn. So this turning is already uh, needed to, to happen for all the lines there, but immediately when you go off north or south from the equator, but not much. So it's, it's happening a, a little bit, a little bit, and so on. Now, other lines are the vertical ones, and uh, this is the most important one. It's uh, called the prime meridian. You know it's important because it has the word prime in it. And the other ones are again counted in degrees and are counted in uh, eastern direction or, or western direction. Uh, unlike the latitude bands, these all meet at the poles. So it looks a little bit like uh, the way you slice an orange. And then we have also this radius. The radius of the Earth is approximately that, that number. Now, For those who don't know, Tuusniemi is some place that is not too far from Joensu and not too far from Kuopio, so I took it to have both people in both places happy. Um, and it has these coordinates. 
I dug them out from some geo tagged picture I have in tools near. Now, these coordinates, uh, what you might not know, is they are called WGS coordinates. And it stands for World Geodetic System. Uh, you might have been you, you might believe that they are enough to define the location of an object, but actually it's not true. It's, it's a little bit of a lie in, in the situation. And the reason is, you might define the location of an object, but you don't define its height. So if there is me on the ground and there is an airplane on top of me, or if there is a car driving on some highway above me, and if there is the International Space Station above the plane, and if you live somewhere here and then the sun is directly on top of you, then you, the sun, the space station, the earth, everything has the same coordinates. So really you still have three values that you need to know. Uh, you also need to know the Earth's radius to position something accurately in, in, uh, in 3D space. Now, this is something that I plan to get over it soon so we can get to the next demo. So I will try to be as quickly as possible uh, explaining these concepts but hopefully not lose anybody. We all learned that in 3D space you have three axes and you want to position something in this three, 3D space, it will have three coordinates, uh, coordinates, an X and a Y and a Z. So knowing that tools near me is at this location, can we get the X, Y and Z of tools near me, considering that the Earth's center, the middle of the Earth is zero, zero, zero? This is one, one question I want to ask. So it is going to be somewhere on the in space, in the 3D space, but the question is where? And I claim that we know this angle. Do we know this angle? How much is it? 50. Yeah, uh, 62, I think, somebody said. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, so it's, it's the, um, the latitude angle. Now, with this angle, could we find out the value for y? Yeah, so, okay, how much is it? Okay, if we look at this triangle, then uh, this line here is the radius, and we know the angle. So y comes from trigono trigonometry. Y is actually something like uh, I think. So I think the sine of the angle is going to be Y divided by R. So then multiplying that value by R divides the R and you're left with, with Y. So you can find it uh, like that. And if you just plot it in, uh, you will end up that Y is at this, this value. So not, not too, too complicated. And since we are here in this triangle, can somebody tell me what is the value for R? Yeah, process. Yeah, so R is cosine because the cosine is the length of the near uh, near edge divided by this uh, uh, by this uh, hypotenuse by the by the capital R. So so far, some of you see, seem to be not lost. But anyway, let's move a little bit. And can somebody write down or remember these values because we will need them a bit later. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good memory. I hope. If we move a little bit R. Yeah. It can also become a quotient. So how I'm not saying that if R is a little bit longer. Yeah. If R is a little bit longer. 
then we can't. We also like this value. You mean if you would have a point here, and then R would be this this line? Okay. Yeah. And then I Y is going to be lower. Uh, the value for Y. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, let's continue a little a little bit now. So. The reason why I wanted you to get that r uh, value is because I claim that r is the same value as the radius of that small circle on the top of the Earth there. And now if we look from the top, just on that, that top circle, I claim that we can do the same tricks in this other, um, in this other situation. So the angle that you see here is actually the same angle from here. And we know that one. Again, so it's something that we know. And knowing it, I want to calculate two more values. I will find out the x. It's exactly the same way as before, but instead of big r, now we have small r. The radius is smaller here. We are not using the big circle anymore. So it's going to be a sign of the, of the value that we know multiplied by the small r and then you get the value for that. And finally, you can get the z value, so the last, uh, last number there with the cosine as, as we got the small r before. So then you have the three different coordinates in this form. So I bet you didn't know that those near me looks also like this. But you could represent it in x, y, z in this way. And yeah, let's move on to the last part so I, I can, uh, after the break, I don't want to show the slides anymore so we can just implement the demos. So finally, let's take another location, in this case Dubai. Okay, now we have two points. We can get, if we have these WGS coordinates, we can get the XYZ. We saw it's possible some, somehow. I'm not going to calculate it for Dubai now, so it might take some time, but anyway, so it is possible. And now I want to ask, do you know how to calculate the distance between two points in space? Has anybody heard of the Euclidean distance function? Okay, yeah. So this is called the Euclidean distance function. It can be useful. It looks like a straight line. In this case, it's not very useful because the shortest distance between those two points is going to mean digging a hole through the Earth. Mm. It's going to be short, but how easy it is, it's another question. And if it is useful, we, we will see later on, maybe during the exercises. But anyway, the Euclidean distance function is, is quite easy. So you should remember that it's the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus <coughs> yeah. So if you know it, if you know the values for x, y, and z, which we saw that we can get, uh, you can calculate the, this direct distance. And now I want to say that more useful is to have the distance which is on top of the Earth. So it's going to be a curve on top of the surface of the Earth, and it's basically how the bird flies, in the sense that maintaining a fixed altitude, if you are able to, to go through trees or, or, or whatever, in this case above them, then this is, is much more useful in, in practice as a distance between two points. And the question is how to get this value if we know the Euclidean distance. So the trick to that is actually finding this angle. Can we find this angle in this situation? And I'm going to make it a bit easier for you. This is a isosceles triangle, so both of these are the radius of the Earth. And in isosceles triangle, the angle bisector is also this uh, height of the, of the triangle. So could we find out maybe what is this this angle from here? So let's call the, the big angle alpha. So let's 
big one is alpha here. And can we find alpha by 2 in this triangle? Remember that we know now how to calculate this one, so we also know how to calculate. Hmm? This will be helpful. Yeah, so if this big one is E for Euclidean, then E divided by 2 we already know, and we know the uh, radius of this is R. Can I get this angle somehow? How? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if we write sine of alpha by 2, it's going to be equal to E divided by 2, so this, this value divided by R, I think. Right? But to get the angle, you need to inverse the, the function. So alpha divided by 2 is actually equal to arc sine. This is now very complicated stuff here. Of E divided by 2 divided by R. So it's the inverse of the sine gives you the angle. You might remember it, or if you don't, then no. Well, now you know. So you can get alpha if needed. You just multiply by 2 there, and, and you have your, your answer. So if you know the, the alpha uh, angle, you just have to do one more thing. Realize that this length, the blue length here, is also part of a very big, uh, a very big circle. circle. Yeah, but you are interested in the length, not of all the big circle, but only this small, small part, referring to the alpha angle. Here. So the full circle, the alpha for the full circle is 360 degrees. Also, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi in radians, right? But now our situation is going to be different. We just want to um, think, okay, so the circumference for this one, so circumference for this one means the length of the circle is going to be 2 pi r. There is no, no argument in, in that. I think you, you know the formula. So this is for the full circle, for everything there. But now, just to get the limit to this one, instead of 2 pi, now we will have our alpha angle. So for alpha angle, our uh, length, this, this blue length here, is going to be alpha of r, right? And our alpha, we saw before, that is this 2a sine of e divided by 2 divided by r. So we know the alpha from here. We know r because it is a constant value. And this is going to be our solution <laughs> for, the, for the distance between two points. And this is what we are going to do in a demo after 10 minutes. Right. Now, while you were away, I did something. Uh, I made a new file. I call it. I called it conversion HTML. So here in the URL, instead of projection.html, it's going to be conversion.html, and this is where we are going to continue our project so that you know which which part has which things in it. So it's just a copy. And I also added some coordinates there because I didn't want to spend time writing it with, uh, with, with you guys here. So some coordinates for Tours, Niami, Dubai, and Grand Canyon. And I added the Grand Canyon example for um, Yarmo, actually, because you can see here it has this negative coordinate. So it's not uh, the typical way you write it. 112 W because it's in the Western Hemisphere. We use the negative negative value for the coordinate here, and we will see later how it how it looks like. And I also wrote another thing. 
I, I wrote um, another function called draw dot, which is basically the same as draw earth, but instead of uh, the sphere, like what we saw before, instead of a big sphere, we will draw a small one with radius 2 that kind of will look like a dot. And the color will be a parameter, and the location is going to be also a parameter. So I will want to draw dots at the location of real cities on our globe. So we will see how that, that works. But um, anyway, it's a very similar uh, function to the draw earth. We saw how we created the sphere in that one, and here it is the same, but the sphere is small. And the color is a parameter, so yeah. Okay, now I will need your help a little bit. So um, I mentioned that I want you to remember some functions for the um, coordinate conversion between, between the two uh, values. But before that, I will make a new helper function because we need to convert values from degrees to radians. So if you remember, we did that a couple of, um, of times, or we, we talked about it a little bit. And that function is quite simple. It looks like this. So let's just call it degree to radian. And we get the degree as a parameter. And we just return the degree multiplied by pi divided by 180. So this is the one, one of the ways you can do it to get the radian value of a degree uh, angle, of an angle in degrees. So this will be useful at some point. And now let's write our main function that we found out together how to get the xyz coordinate of a WGS coordinate. So function, I will call it WGS to XYZ. So it's the first thing that we did with the tools Niemi when we found the XYZ values for it. And parameters are going to be the location in, in WGS. But let's we need to give also the radius because you remember my example with the airplane above and we need to know how far up do we want this point to be. And the radius is going to be again this the radius of the Earth. We want them to be on the surface of the Earth. So, let's begin with uh, our variable that will contain the result. So, x, y, z is equal to, and I initialize it here to 0, 0, 0. And slowly we will build the value. So, if you remember, we first got the y value x, y, z, the y parameter of this was equal to sine uh, of the latitude angle. Yeah, so location dot lat uh, multiplied by r, the radius. Now, the one thing that we didn't talk before is here you need to call this deg to rad function, which we declared before, because the mathematical mathemat the mathematic functions that work with trigonometry in JavaScript and in almost any other language, they work with radians. They don't work with degrees. So this is just something that you should know. Uh, luckily, I know it. Uh, right. And then we got the value for the small r. So this was same as before, but it had a cosine there. Yeah. How about the x value? Do you remember that one? Somebody didn't note, note down <laughs> everything. It was exactly the same as the y value. But instead of big R, it was the small R. So the reason we calculated the small R was for that smaller circle there. Yeah, and the Z value is 
the same but with the cosine there. So now we have the x, y, z values for a WGS coordinate and I'm just going to return that. So relatively simple, I think. And now I'm going to use my newly... Uh, okay, let's take Tuusniemi as an example. So I'm going to take the Tuusniemi as an example. And I'm going to write here um, XYZ Tuusniemi is equal to WGS to XYZ of the Tuusniemi location with the radius the Earth's radius, so I'm just going to copy it from the, from the top there. And I'm going to log it to the console. To see how much it is, uh, the value. So I'm going to go back here, I reload the page, and I see here that I have now values X, Y, and Z printed out. So this is my console log. Uh, value from here and I'm not sure anymore but uh, I think these values look okay so somehow I remember them from the slide before but to really know if they work we have to plot them on the, on the map on the earth so I'm going to try to do that using that new draw dot function that I, I secretly wrote here before you came and by the way I didn't test it so it might uh, might give surprises. So I'm going to draw the dot at the XYZ location of Tuusniemi with the uh, color. Let's make it. Uh, let's make it red, like a red dot. So the the draw dot value had the parameters, the location. This has to be XYZ location, and the color. Uh, I just make it red. So now, reload, it doesn't work. So for some reason it doesn't work. And to find out why it doesn't work, I'm going to teach you another very useful uh, tool here. In this debugging tools, you have also the possibility to search for a function. So I'm going to search for a function, this uh, draw of something. Uh, draw D, so I have this draw dot here, I'm going to search for it, I can find it here, the, the source code, and I can insert the breakpoint. So this breakpoint is just me clicking here, and now I have the possibility to reload the page, and you can see it's gray, something, something is not, not right, and that is saying here that it's paused in the debugger. So I can check what is the value of the location. Okay, it's a big value, suspiciously big value because 5,666 kilometers does not fit in my screen. And this is one thing that I, again, secretly had before. I had the options to scale uh, to scale points or to scale uh, different sizes implemented here I basically divide by the radius and I multiply by 100 so it's a uh, it's something I do so that the real world coordinates fit in our viewing angle I scale them down I squish everything to a value and I think that this is what I need to do to our two SNIEMI result here so I need to squish this point to scale the point down so that it fits into the, the screen. I'm going to remove the breakpoint and reload the page. Aha! And two Sniemi is... It's not here, is it? <laughs> well, the reason for that is because this... You remember I, I mentioned before the Arma Null Island? It was this point where zero latitude and zero, zero longitude, it's actually here where my cursor is. 
the reason, by the way, why it's called null island is because when you make errors in your programs and you think you have the coordinates, but some error happens and you don't, then they will go to zero, zero. And any error with location will move you to this one place. So over the years, there have been a lot of pictures and a lot of trajectories and a lot of things happening in Null Island, even though nothing is there. But the world data sets think that something very important is there because everybody goes there when the application crashes. <laughs> OK. So the reason Tuzniami is not at the correct place is because the texture for this map is not aligned to the prime meridian, to the screen which mer meridian. It starts somewhere here, but our Earth needs to be either, either we rotate the Earth or we cut this image, take this part from the left side here, and move it so that it starts at zero, zero. We need to do some image processing. But I'm not going to do any image processing. I'm just going to rotate the Earth somehow. Oh, yeah. So in our draw earth function, I will rotate it so that it compensates for this problem in our image. And this happens quite easily. I know, I know the distance, uh, the angle it needs to move. So it's going to rotate on the y axis, and it's going to go. Mm, minus 90 degrees it has to rotate to match so I actually found this out just by trial and error uh, I didn't bother to calculate um, and yeah 90 degrees in, in radians so that's pi divided by 2 uh, of course I could also put our special uh, make to rad function here with 90 degrees if you if you want it, but um, so now if I go back, it still doesn't work. Interesting. Oh, um, oh geez, minus 90 degrees. Still doesn't work. <laughs> okay. What am I doing wrong? Mm, let's leave it without this function now. Some problems. Anybody figures it out, uh, gets a bonus point. <laughs> uh, could it be that it's not this much? I don't think so. Latitude seems to be correct. So latitude seems to be kind of where Dusniemi is somewhere here. But this uh, projection seems to... Could it be that my coordinate is wrong? Can you test for the null island, maybe? Uh, sorry? Can you just test for the null island? Oh, very good point. Very good point. So I'm just going to overwrite tools near me here. I'm going to make it be the null island. Very good point. So uh, Arash wants me to have a reference point. OK, reference point seems to be spot on. So I suspect I, I did some error uh, writing the coordinates for tools near me manually before coming here. Let's try the other ones also. So let's put also Dubai and the Grand Canyon. <laughs> uh, it's one way to, uh, of debugging. Just put more points there and see how they how they look like. So. Put Dubai. Somebody could try to find the coordinates of Tuesday. I mean, <laughs> meanwhile, um, okay, Dubai. I'm not sure where Dubai is, which is a 
procedure. It's not that easy. Yes, Sorry? It's there. It's fine. This is not. You are in Egypt now. You are in Egypt. In Africa. You must go to Egypt. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, right. Right, right, right. Good point. Good point. So, yeah. So, is the latitude for Dubai correct? Seems. Seems the latitude is probably. Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's see our function again. So, we have this one. Oh. All that. Exactly. So you get half a bonus point because uh, <laughs> I, I figured it out, but uh, <laughs> but you spoke it. So we used just one angle there. Uh, it was the, supposed to be the longitude. Let's uh, save and refresh. Okay. So we figured it out, but uh, not, not easily. And now let's also get... Well, I think this is this is quite quite nice. It's uh, now you you have an Earth there, and you can um, put points on it from coordinates to to the from WGS coordinates into X Y Z. It kind of looks like a real real map tool. And just to prove a point uh, before, instead of radius, I'm going to put here radius plus three hundred. So. I'm just going to put uh, extra value for the radius. What do you think will happen before we make the conversion to x, y, z? I'm going to take our latitude longitude coordinates, and I'm going to say that the er radius of the Earth is bigger by 300 kilometers. <coughs> Time's up. Something is happening. Well, something is happening. <laughs> they, the points are hovering. They are now in space somewhere. But they are still over the same location. So they are over the city, but they are on a, on a higher, uh, higher elevation. So they have the same latitude and longitude, but they are 300 meters above the Earth's, the Earth's surface. Oh. Excuse me, how do you uh, calculate the scale for that? Yes, so the scale value uh, for, uh, for um, the Earth, because I can't fit the Earth with uh, this many kilometers in my screen, I had to uh, divide by the radius. So any size value that I want to scale here, I divide it by the radius then I will have a value between 0 and 1 for anything inside the Earth, up to the Earth's surface. What is this size value? Uh, it is the parameter. So I can scale anything in this, um, in, this, uh, in this world that I am drawing here. Yeah, but where, where does it come in, the size? Um, all the functions, every time I call this function, the size is the radius. Okay, right. Because, because I drew also these, uh, if you remember at the beginning, these, uh, these axes, they were also the size of the Earth. The Earth is the size of the Earth. And now these points should also be exactly on top of the Earth, but now I gave you this example of what happens if, if they are much. So I just normalize everything between 0 and 100, actually. So these units are... Uh, are um, this OpenGL works with some stranger units. But, um, yeah. Uh, what about the uh, picture? Why does it uh, was uh, draw to that <laughs> that position that you have to uh, rotate. So, because this picture here, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to open paint. I'm going to paste it here. The Earth, um, the, in that environment, because the picture starts here, it's, it assumes that zero is here on the left. Why does the zero is 
there. Because, because this is how the picture looks like. I could have also fixed the problem by by doing this, by taking... Yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, but they, they have a, 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 had a standard. They, yeah. They had a, had a standard about the very What was the name of the system? This uh, Greenwich uh, standard uh, stuff. And Mercado. Sorry? Mercado. Mercado. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. well, well, okay. This is not the Mercator projection, it's the equi rectangular projection, but uh, it doesn't matter. So if you take the Mercator projection and you do this, what I'm doing now, it is still the Mercator projection. It's just shifted um, horizontally. So it, it just rotated the Earth a little bit. The reason why uh, these pictures are not like this is because now in the center of the image here, okay, in this part, there is nothing. And humans oh. want to see something in the center of the image. Okay. So it's, the decision was just made so that, okay, in this angle it looks like there are things there. So uh, I don't know better reason why, why this was made. But it's good to know that uh, there is a the shift is 90 degrees. Yeah, yeah, that's good to know. And uh, I had to find it out experimentally. I didn't even know how much it is, but uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, coming back to here. So I removed from the radius those extra points, uh, those extra values. So when I refresh now, I'm going to have the points again glued on the top of the uh, glued on the top of the earth and finally I'm going to say rename this file again so the third demo it's going to be distance distances dot HTML and now we just calculate the distances between these two points so I'm going to also change the link here from conversion to distances just to make sure I'm not working in a different environment than, than what I'm testing and now I want to calculate the distance between these two points let's say so let's put the placeholder function here um, and the first point is going to be this XYZ to Usniemi and XYZ Dubai, the second, the second value. And I'm going to log it again to the console. And I'm going to write the function, so let's call it P1 and P2 there. So you remember the Euclidean function, we began with that. So these are x, y, z points, right? Because we already did the conversion there. So the distance between P1 and P2 is going to be... square root of... Yeah, uh, but this was squared, right? And now I'm going to add this to the uh, y component, and then the, the z component comes there. So let's... Sorry? Yeah, okay, error here. So uh, one plus sign there would have been uh, something that the browser would have complained. So I save it and I reload the page. So going back to this console where I'm expecting the output, it says it's 4,852 something that I said is kilometers. So if you change this to meters or something else, you will get uh, the different values uh, there. But anyway, seems reasonable that the straight, even, yeah? Seems, seems reasonable uh, even there is the x's and the y's in the calculation. I, I think they are wrong. Okay. What did you do? 
What do you mean? What, 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 is, what was the calculation? Can you... Can you... Ah, oh, okay. Um, here. Yeah, x, p, x minus y minus and third one, x minus ah, z. Yes. Good point, thank you. I save it. I run again, so before it was 4852, now it is 4529. So not okay. much not much difference, but uh, this is the correct the correct value. Thank you. So this is again now the, the straight line. So going through the earth here, connecting these two points, but let's now get also the Haver sign, so the, that more complicated one that we did be before. So I'm going to write Haver sign between P1 and P2. And here I think I need to use, yeah, we need to use also the, the two values. Okay. So, first of all, we need to use the Euclidean. So I'm going to rename this to Euclidean to know what I'm talking about. Um, and here I'm going to calculate its distance. So before we called it capital E, is the Euclidean value of P1 and P2. So this is what we calculated before. But now we need also these uh, angle, these different angle things. So if you remember my, my calculation, it was the result uh, was 2 multiplied by the radius, which now I don't have. It's not a parameter here. I will ha do a trick and take it here from the global variables. So usually you should avoid using global variables, but uh, it's faster now. And then the inverse sign, so arc sign of this distance value E divided by 2 times this radius again. So this is all that we did in the slides and we, we calculated before, but in, in, in code. And I'm going to return it return the value of this uh, distance and up here where I call the distance function now it has a name now it's the Haver sign distance and okay let's do this so Euclidean distance here and Haver sign distance uh, at the bottom right so now I'm printing both of them and let's see how they, they differ there so Euclidean says to be 4,500 kilometers and the true one on the top of the earth is 4,630 kilometers. 